Guess who's back in the house? I hope that you guys are having a great Tuesday. I am so excited to talk about the Baloo, Baloo, <laughs> Boule Brothers Season 3, Episode 4. I woke up last night around 1 a.m. trying to watch this episode. And by 4 a.m., it still had not premiered on Amazon Prime. And so normally it appears on Prime around 4 a.m. And so I slept for like two hours, woke up, went to work. 14 hours later, it felt um, not that long. Um, but it it came on Amazon around, I think, three or four. So I watched most of the episode at work, and then I finished it um, heading home. So let's get into the episode. So um, in the boudoir, a lot the contestants are talking about who they think went home the previous episode and so uh people it's mixed like some people think it's hollow based off of the way that she behaved and some people actually think it's uh Yowska, uh based off her just kind of like overall presentation and so dahlia actually says she lit a candle um hoping that the source of all evil would actually leave the com the um, competition but the candle did not blow out and so she actually knew that that person was still in the competition so i believe it was landon who said well who is the source of all evil and dahlia says madeline her grandmother and landon was like why would you say that and dahlia said um it's tension that never gets resolved and that's actually really important to remember uh for the end of the episode and so that line really reminded me of um i don't know if you guys have ever watched prometheus but um i think it's the um gosh the the robot character uh, he says, uh, don't all children want their parents to die? And in Prometheus, um, the movie questions, why were humans created? And you learn that humans were created to be destroyed. So in Dragula, are they asking why were drag queens created? And are they to be exterminated? Um, <laughs> I know that's a stretch. Um, and so uh, they get a call to go to um, the main stage. And I love that we get the video message again. So that's going to be a constant during um, this season. And I love that. And so the video message tells them that they will be doing an advanced Dungeons and Dragon drag queen um, campaign. And they have to put together a full fantasy look and also act out a character. And it looks like Oleg just joined and it says, where do I get the link? Um, I actually watched it on Amazon Prime. Um, I was actually searching on YouTube for something and I couldn't find one. If I find one, I will um, message you uh, what it is. And so I've never actually played Dungeons and Dragon. Have any of you ever played Dungeons and Dragon? Um, some of my former students would play. And so basically it's a character role playing adventure game that is driven by the imagination. And so it sounds a little intriguing. I actually 
um, just happened to look up online um, Dungeon and Dragon meetups. And in Los Angeles, there are over 20. And I was shocked. And so I actually might go to one just to like check it out. It just seems kind of like interesting. And so um, Israel, um, who his body is incredible, like body goals, uh, he brings them this kind of like scroll. And in the scroll, there's kind of like this riddle about finding a key and it's the key of life and death. And so Dahlia finds uh, this key and um, people are trying to figure out what it's going to be. But Israel also brings them kind of like their, Deshaun Stalling says, hey, how's it going? How everyone online, I hope that you guys are enjoying the video thus far. Oh, somebody said, what was Landon's floor show look? I will get to that in a second. Um, and so, uh, Israel also brings out their, uh, scripts for the role playing and everyone is rehearsing, but Madeline, um, goes to talk to Dahlia to talk about the tension, uh, that has occurred between them. And so they actually talk for a very long time and it gets very personal. And so um, I kind of like missed what was stated the previous episode where they had um, their kind of like side conversation about the um, issue with trust that was violated between them. And so what happened was um, Madeline has addiction issues and she had a few drinks at a gig that, um, what's her name? Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on her name. Dahlia had, and so I guess Dahlia was embarrassed. And so um, sobriety and addiction are very difficult. I have, one of my family members uh, suffers from alcoholism and has struggled with it all of their lives. And I can only imagine what it must be like to be a performer in nightclubs. I've never been to a sober nightclub. And so alcohol is readily available. And oftentimes people will provide the performers with free alcohol. And I imagine that it's very difficult to perform in clubs every single night. Um, and Madeline is based out of New York and I'm sure a lot of people offer her drinks all night long. And so it might be difficult to turn down if you're constantly seeing that. Um, and so they actually spoke for such a long period of time that they missed the entire rehearsal with the rest of the contestants. And so, um, there was a really beautiful moment where Dahlia told Madeline that um, she didn't have to worry about her and that she wanted to protect her. She didn't want anything uh, to harm her. And she really wanted to create a safe space for Madeline. And that was such a beautiful moment. Um, that's a moment that we haven't really seen on Dragula before. And so I really kind of like appreciate um, seeing that, especially coming from like a younger person to an older person. It's typically the older individuals who are trying to comfort the younger individuals and to create a safe space for them. So it was kind of like um, a great generational moment, um, but seeing it in reverse. So that was cool. And so the next day, uh, we learned that uh, Eva Destruction didn't finish high school and was kicked out of her parents' home at 17 and had to go to a 
Uh, I think she called it like a teens um, correctional facility. She didn't say what type of facility that facility that it was, but she felt that part of her childhood was robbed, and that when she found drag, it was something that couldn't be taken away from her. And she just started sobbing. And her and Louisiana had a beautiful moment together. Like, I really, I'm really loving the way that Louisiana comforts the other contestants um, who are going through a rough patch. And she said, thank you for being vulnerable with us. That is the beauty of what drag can do. It allows you to dig in those deep, dark areas and get it out. You might have a very, or you might have a really dark, horrible past, but this is the beginning for you. Isn't that beautiful? Um, just such a beautiful, comforting thing to say. So we actually fast forward to the role play adventure and the cinematography for this part is gorgeous I, um where i don't know where they were there's like a um there's like a permanent renaissance fair in california i don't know exactly where it is um i don't know if it was actually filmed there but wherever their filming was the location was gorgeous they used like um like a drone camera they use beautiful wide shots, gorgeous. And so the guest judges for this episode is the creator of Dead or Filth podcast, Michael Verratti, and then the um, creator of Jawbreaker, Darian Stein. And so we get all of these fantasy looks. And so I was impressed with pretty much everyone. Um, so we first see Dahlia and she, I believe was an orc princess and she was orcnacious in my opinion. Um, she had this incredible mask that covered her entire head and it had two horns in front. The painting looked really cool to me and she did that thing that she does with her eyes that is kind of like a double eye. So I really appreciated that. Um, and I loved, she had this beautiful cape and this really cool bodysuit that I loved. Then we had Maxie. So this is actually the best that I've ever seen Maxie look in terms of kind of like a completed look. From head to toe, I knew the story. She had this kind of like um, lime green reptilian mask, which was very realistic. Um, her whole body was painted and, um, she had green braids and she had cool props. So I really liked her. Um, Madeline actually really surprised me. She really stepped it up this episode. Um, she really kind of, she hasn't really stood out in the previous episodes, but she wore this kind of like, her paint was a, um, like a green sugar crystal skull. Um, which was really beautiful. Um, I loved her darkened eyes and she had this gorgeous white lace front that she had beat the crap out of it. It was just laying so beautifully on her head. Um, and the outfit though, I really didn't care for. It looked kind of like more costumey. Priscilla looked like Priscilla with elf ears. Like I really didn't love her effect or look at all. Um, Louisiana looked very soft, um, but it looked like all of the attention went above the neck. She had this beautiful blonde lace front with a braid, this really cool jewelry forehead piece, um, this uh, amazing starred tiara. Um, her ears were bedazzled, her elf ears were bedazzled, um, and she was wearing these beautiful earrings. And then the bottom part um, was just didn't do it for me at all. It was like this silver bodysuit um, that didn't do it for me. Um, Hollow's Eve. Um, 
as kind of like controversial as she is, her looks are always impeccable. Like she had the most realistic. She, I think she was the most realized character. Um, she was completely badass. She made a crossbow. I don't know how she did that. She made a crossbow. Um, she had these um, amazing um, like leather cuffs. She had these really cool buckles. She had this kind of like almost like weatherized green top and like this really cool vest and her hair um, looked really good, like long dark hair that there were a few braids um, when she removed her hood. So she looked incredible. Landon blew me away. Um, I really loved everything about his look. He had this great uh, violet um, paint on his face um, with this cool kind of like uh, purple blue wig that he had dyed. Um, and his outfit was like structured and layered with kind of like fur, this kind of like heavy cotton material. Um, he just, and oh, and I love that the shield that he created, he created, I think he said it was um, Eva foam or Eva foam. So he took this foam and he made a shield out of it. And he used all of these kind of like different instruments to make it, um, he um, dyed it like this um, really cool um, light brown color, but used all of these tools to kind of like um, make it look realistic. So that was beautiful. And he had some type of like club um, that he created as well. So Landon looked incredible. I was really impressed. Eva, on the other hand, really went all out. Um, I forget Eva's character, but uh, Eva was some type of like warrior, um, maybe reptilian warrior. And she actually, I don't know if she made it, but she had a tail um, that looked so realistic. Um, and it had all of these kind of like really cool kind of like reptilian like um, scales and designs on it that it um, her body her entire body matched the tail um, and she was even kind of like hunched over um, changing her posture and so that looked really cool and so she had all of these like really cool leather embellishments um, and armor with kind of like feathers decorating her armor and so she was incredible. Um, everyone except for Priscilla looked really good to me. And so going to the role play, I I mean, like, I can't pick up. Well, they did a few takes, apparently, which we didn't get to see as the audience. Um, and they were actually given direction by the guests and the Boulay brothers. Um, but the final role play that we see it, it to me it looks like one complete take because the editing was great um, everyone remembered their lines um, everyone did really well some people had like less parts like Dahlia dies very quickly um, and I think that um, it was it was well written with everyone in mind um, and I love that in the end it is Landon and oh my gosh what's his name um crap um the boule brothers um kind of like assistant he's he has like the supervising role on the he has this complicated last name but whatever that guy's name is i think it's like dylan or something um he's like the um the prince and landon um he's defending the demon blood and Landon actually like kisses him um, and that is um, her prize, the man, uh, which I love. And so um, fast forward, um, we learn that with the T, T, key, um, Dahlia 
can either save herself from extermination or send someone else to extermination. And so she actually saves herself. And we get all of this kind of like commentary from the other contestants that it's smart that she saved herself because um, she didn't do that well in the acting challenge. And they said that her costume didn't look that great, which it looked incredible to me, but I guess kind of like close up. Um, everyone could see kind of like the flaws in the costume. And so she saves herself. Um, and then the Boulay brothers immediately say that Priscilla is safe, which I don't really couldn't see how she was safe. She had the most basic costume out of everyone else. Um, and then um, they say that Louisiana and Hollow are safe. Um, Eva wins the challenge overall so this is her second win so based off of previous season season one and two vander and bitch put in in the first three episodes they won um either the first second or third um, episodes so if history repeats itself uh we have eva Dahlia and Landon they won the first three challenges so if history repeats itself one of them could potentially win the competition and Eva this is her second competition win so she seems like the strongest um, contestant right now with so many wins underneath her belt and so I'm actually excited to see more of Eva but I, I really think that Hollow is a strong competitor. So she might like throw a wrench into this um, theory, uh, but she's a very strong competitor. And so unfortunately that leaves Madeline and Maxi in the bottom. And Madeline um, has a complete meltdown when she hears what the extermination will be. The extermination will be that the other contestants throw rotten food at them and they have to beg and plead and state why they deserve to be on the show. So Madeline has this complete meltdown, um, which was um, really disturbing to see. I don't know why this was, why, this should have been edited out, but like we should not have seen that. Um, she has a complete meltdown. Production stops and um, the crew is actually trying to talk her into doing this scene. And she tells them that one of the things, I guess, um, early on, I guess before they actually started taping, she said that she did not want to look foolish um, during taping. And so she said that she has been made to look a fool this entire experience. Um, and it, it was just very unprofessional, um, which it was kind of like odd when I actually learned that um, Madeline was a part of the cast because she seems like someone who's really established. She's really well known in the New York scene. Um, she's more, I think, um, someone that I would have expected to see on Drag Race and not Dragula. Um, and so it was just like, I'm surprised. I thought she was going to storm off and just leave completely. Have a freaking Valencia exclamation point moment. Um, but then she kind of like, one of the pr um, crew members states something about, you know, this is a a TV show and she says no this is based in reality and he says yes and she says something to the effect of well let's make good TV I was like that was unnecessary and so she goes with the mindset that she's going to read all of the other contestants on the show Maxie actually read her quote unquote the house down um and Maxi actually sold it for me. Um, like I loved that Maxi 
was just reading Madeline for filth um, and dragging her across the stage because she was talking about how passionate she was about the competition and how creative that she can be. And so I kind of like got this knot in my stomach because like I I really liked what Maxie gave. Oh, I forgot to mention that um, the judges stated that one of the things that they didn't like about Maxie is that with her mask, it wasn't actually kind of like molded to her face. It was an actual mask so that it muffled her voice and they could barely hear her. And because it was in like a an actual mask that wasn't on her attached to her face, um, they there was no um, she couldn't emote, and so um, a lot of things went kind of like missing from her, and so that's why she was in the bottom, and Madeline was in the bottom because Dahlia saved herself. She had she not saved herself, she would have been in the bottom. And so um, I was like, I, I hope that they're fair and that they don't save Madeline. But it wasn't fair. Um, Maxie was exterminated. Um, but um, she has a cool extermination. Like she's running through this kind of like alleyway in this kind of like renaissance fair space and this kind of like gate closes trapping her and there's a sword that goes down through the air and it splits open her head like a watermelon it was disgusting but it was cool at the same time um so that sucks i was actually really starting to like maxi um, Maxi is a great uh, performer. Uh, she's incredible. Oh wait, somebody said I got in trouble from the program. Oh, it just disappeared. It like flashed and then it disappeared. So I don't know. I couldn't read the rest of what it said. Sorry. I'll try to see it again. Um, so yeah, Maxi has left the competition. That sucks. Um, some of my favorites have left. Like I, like I hope they bring back Yauska. That would be really cool if they brought her back. Um, like do something like Drag Race where someone has left too soon and they're brought back. I hope that happens this season because that would be brilliant. Um, we have so much more to see from her. Um, so um, I will try to look for a link to um, Oleg. I think that's how you pronounce it, Oleg. Um, but I hope that you guys liked this, uh, review. Um, and I actually think that episode five is live on Amazon Prime right now because of how long it took to upload episode four. And so after this live, I'm actually going to, um, try to watch episode five and do a review as well um so i hope that you guys like this review um and i think i will be making another one shortly after this uh so stay tuned for that um as always please be kind to each other especially our trans brothers and sisters. They're the most vulnerable in the community and they need our protection and assistance. Um, what does it say? I might skip Maxie's death scene because how bloody it is. No, watch it. It's incredible. Um, you should see it. Um, I'll actually DM it to you so I can force you to watch it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so have a wonderful day, guys. Um, until next time, besos.